Good evening, everyone. Good to see you again. Uh, and, uh, we are going into our evening service. And, uh, hope uh, you have time to have church this morning. And, uh, had a good time in the presence of God. Uh, remember, just a number of things. Uh, keep up with the uh, government regulations. Stay at home. Wash your hands. Make sure the social dis distancing is being done as much as you can. Um, uh, I believe we will go through this and uh, God will help us. Uh, remember, for all those uh, that are willing to give, you can give to our church account numbers at the bottom of the screen. And also, if uh, you are unable to do that, you can keep all the offerings until uh, uh, when we come back together again in church, and we can bring that to keep in an envelope separate from everything else, but uh, we uh, can be able to bring it at the end of uh, this whole lockdown. Um, tonight I'm preaching a sermon titled, Just Ask, Just Ask God, um, but we're going to go through that. Please uh, gather your family, uh, start church again, let's do another evening service, may God bless you. Good evening everyone, uh, thank you for joining us once again for this uh, evening service, and uh, may God bless you. Uh, I want you to turn your Bibles to Psalms chapter 2, verses 8. I'm just going to read that verse and we God to uh, help us all. Uh, before we read, uh, uh, Charles Spurgeon, uh, great preacher, said these words. He says, we must remember that the goal of prayer is the ear of God. Unless that is gained, the prayer has utterly failed. The pattern of it may have kindled devotional feelings in our minds. The hearing, if it may have comforted and strengthened the hearts of those we have prayed. But if the prayer has not gained the heart of God, it has failed in its essential purpose. Let's read our text. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. Let's pray. Father, thank you for putting us together, gathering us together, God, where we are. Thank you, Lord, once again for your spirit. Thank you, God, for your touch. Lord, I give you glory and honor and meet with everyone, God. Let your spirit, God, permeate and reach our hearts. I give you glory and honor. Thank you for this moment in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Prayer is a critical part of your relationship with God. Prayer is a tool that opens the access of God's wealth into your life. It is like a key to this great treasure that's out there and once you pray, enters into the lock and opens up the great treasures of God unto man. We all have seen how prayer can influence the intentions of God to even change. Prayer moves his mighty hand into action on our behalf. Heaven with all that it has is under obligation to act according to the influence of your prayer. Prayer takes the dire needs of our lives, our society, and our circumstances, and puts it in the mind of Almighty God. Prayer conveys whatever we ask into his ear. You have to know that prayer is not just something we do. It's not something we gather together uh, and just utter some words. It has to have element that is able to reach the ears of God. Prayer is man taking his needs and putting them before God. Prayer, you have to understand, is an act of conveying your needs before God. We have computer systems today and uh, we, uh, you know, we can take a video 
know, uh, you have to uh, convey it, or, you know, most of the times they'll compress it to meet a certain format that will be acceptable in other mediums. This is true also of prayer, that a human being has to pray because as you pray, you are conveying and converging and changing your physical needs to become spiritual. The Bible says God is spirit. And he who comes to him comes to him in spirit and in truth. Human beings, we have this incredible ability to take physical needs. And this has only been given to the human beings. We are capable of taking these physical needs and convey them to become spiritual. God hears from the spiritual man. He is spirit. And those who come to him come to him in spirit and truth. We convey, we take these needs that are physical. They are things we go through in our societies, in our communities, in our lives. But when we pray, we convey them to become spiritual and they go before the throne of God. Like Spurgeon has said, many people have prayed. They've satisfied probably the human crowd around them. Many have prayed and they've satisfied the hearers who are on the media and everything. But you find that their prayers never reach the ears of Reason being that we have not learned how to convey and turn our physical needs into a spiritual thought so that God can be able to receive them. Like Spurgeon has said, the problem with mankind is that our prayers do not reach the ear of God. Most of our prayers die and disintegrate before they reach even just a few feet from where we are. This is a generation that is full of prayer meetings. This is a generation that's full of, uh, uh, you know, vigils, uh, you name them, but little change. The reason being that we have not learned to convey, to turn and make the format of our needs through our words, through our humility, through our soul to be able to become spiritual words, physical needs. If they are going to be heard by God, have to be conveyed and they become spiritual. They have to be transformed from the format of physical to the format of the spiritual. And also, answers in your life come back through the same pattern. They have to be spiritual, converted back into becoming physical. The human being and prayer play that significant part in the kingdom of God. Prayer is an act of asking what you do not possess or have no ability to possess. Prayer is an act of bringing your impoverishment to God. It would be foolish for a person to ask God for something you already have. I can't go up to God and say, God, give me a wife when I already have one. Most of the times when we pray, we look at the things that we desire, but most of the times we don't look at what we already possess. Our text is very precise about this, that prayer should have a dimension of an act of asking. If you are going to convert the spiritual things, or the physical needs to become spiritual, and the spiritual to become physical. So that they are in the format of God and also in the format of your human need. You have 
have to learn to ask. Our text tells us here in Psalms 2, ask of me and I will give you. We can go through the scriptures and find out that God in every instance says ask. Matthew 7, 7 to 12, ask and it will be given to you. God in all instances, when it's about communication between you and him, he will say, ask, Matthew 21, 22, and whatever things you ask in prayer, believe it, you have received. What is the converter? What is what will convey your physical needs? Convert them and convey them to become spiritual. It's simple. The scriptures are blatant about it. And they're saying it is when you ask. I have noticed in the years of ministry that not many people know how to ask. Asking is not demanding. I've sat in prayer meetings, I've heard people pray, and they're trying to demand things from God. I've sat in prayer meetings and I've heard people try to command God. I've sat in prayer meetings and I've heard people shout as loud as they can, thinking that by that they can force the hand of God the scriptures are very clear. Ask. In the church today, we pray, but we don't ask. And in the end, our prayers don't become anything. We don't, we don't avail much. In Nigeria, kidnapping is a very common thing. But the potency of kidnapping is that they'll take a person that you value and then use that love, the value you have for that person and demand money for the release of them. The threat is always if you do not pay, you will kill the person. They manipulate the value you have for that person to make gain for you. Similarly, people think that God is holding back the things you value. And so you think by demanding, you think by or commanding him, he is going to release them. We think that somehow God has kidnapped the desires of our heart. We think sometimes that God has place them in some kind of lockdown and, and he is sitting there and saying you know, until, no that's why we come up aggressively we come to God demanding, we come to God trying to push our agenda so most of us base our prayers on meeting certain acts I've sat with people and they're telling me I fasted God. I fasted pastor. I tithe. I attend church. I am faithful. I help others. I evangelize. I'm in ministry, etc., etc. And what they're saying there is that, uh, oh God, I brought the payment for you to release my blessings. I fasted. I've attended church. I've, I've not missed the service. I've been faithful. I don't sin. I don't do this. I don't do that. I evangelize. I God, now I've met the requirement. Give me my heart's desires. But that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible doesn't teach us that, you know, evangelize and you will receive. It doesn't teach us that, you know, attend church, tithe. And, you know, these are very important parts of Christianity and serving God. But if you want God to help you in your prayer life, you have to learn how to ask. You see, asking, we don't like it much because it's putting yourself 
in a position of impoverishment. It's whereby you're going to come down to God and you're going to be in need. We all like coming to God like he is holding something back and say, give it back to me, God. Or oh, I've already met the requirements and we are purchasing. Purchasing, when you have money and resources, you go to a store, you pay. It's, 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 it gives you a form of pride that you can acquire things because you have the requirements. But asking tells you you don't have the requirements. Asking tells you you don't qualify, but you're going to sit before somebody and be in an impoverished position. And that person will decide what to do for you, whether they give it or not. I've sat down in places in my life where I had to ask, and I did not like it. It's whereby what I had, what was in my hands was not adequate and I had to go there and ask for something. And when you're asking, there is the embarrassment that comes with it. There is a, the, the feeling of, you know, a lack of power. There's the feeling of whereby you, you look like you're vulnerable, susceptible. And that's what we all don't like about asking. And without asking, God cannot answer. But you see, asking demands that you impoverish yourself. You become impoverished. Somehow we think spiritual activity is payment for the release of God's blessing. It's not. Our text is saying, ask of me. Meaning, don't bring anything but your impoverishment. Bring your luck. Bring your situation where you are helpless and you need help. So, if you're going to convert your physical needs, you have to have a state of impoverishment. There has to be in your attitude the knowledge that you do not have what you need. Again, Matthew 7, 7 to 12. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. It unto him who knocks, it will be opened. Or what man is there among you? If his son asks for bread, he will give him a stone. Or if he asks for fish, will he Will he give him a servant? If you then, being evil, know how to give good things to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? There is no way in scripture that I've read that people came and demanded from God and commanded God, I command you, God, to do this for me. And, and this is why. Many people are looking at our Christianity and saying, you know, nothing is happening since they got saved. It's because we picked up an attitude of demand, command. And, but listen, if you're going to ask, you're going to have to be humble. You're going to have to admit your inadequacies. You're going to have to admit that you are vulnerable. You're going to have to admit that God I have not accomplished. I cannot do this. God, I come before. And when there is an attitude of asking in a man, the converting begins to happen. That physical need that begins to get converted to become spiritual so that it's in the format that God will receive it. So to be very simple, if you do not ask, you cannot be given. God wants us all that we learn how to ask. He even says in our text, the nations for your inheritance, the ends of the earth for your inheritance. He is capable of giving us this thing. If there's anything, you know, that any one of us wants to have, you want to have an inheritance. I mean, the, the nations, what's in the earth, what's the gold, the silver, the things that God has placed, the oil, that this can become.
become your inheritance if you know how to ask. To the ends of the earth for your position. God knows you need some stuff. God knows before you even ask. But he says, go out and speak it. You see, when you ask for things, I've never seen a child can come to their mother and father and just come up and say, hey, woman, imagine a child comes up to the mother in this way. Hey, woman, uh, can you cook me some food? Let me tell you, uh, that child in our African setup will receive a very good slap from the parents because they'll tell you, who do you think you are to command me? Who do you think you are? Though the child is hungry, though the child needs the food, but the way he communicated his need to his mother did not suffice. Similar also with God, how we convey our need matters. That's why the scriptures tell us to ask. Can you ask God to ask the child has to come and say, Hello, Mom. Mom, I've been feeling hungry. I'm asking for some food. I'll tell you that mother will run quickly, prepare a meal for that child, and give it to that child, and the need is taken care of. It's similar also with God. You cannot come to God in your own arrogance. If you're with your own aggression, oh, I'll come out and just scream some things out at him, demand some things at him, like he is just sitting out there, God, I want this. And look, that's how I've seen so many people come to prayer meetings with that attitude. And it does not warrant anything. God just pulls away and says, Who do you think you are to command me? He is almighty. You have to realize that. He owns the world. There is nothing in this world. There's no, he doesn't even need to give you things. If whether he gives you, he doesn't change his status as being God. You and I have to learn to appeal to God. Every asking act, if I could put it that way, has to have an appeal in it. That demand to say, God, I'm in lack. A humility, an impoverishment, a state of whereby when you speak, you are appealing to God. The old picture of a man kneeling and saying, God, help me, is whereby when you are kneeling, when you're on your knees, you're vulnerable. Anybody who's been a fighter, who has been involved in any type of uh, uh, you know, combat kinds of games or anything, whenever somebody goes on their knees, that's the most vulnerable place. You can be kicked and defeated, you, you can be harmed, and that's the picture when we kneel down. And this just doesn't mean physical. It means your heart attitude kneels down. You drop the attitude. You drop the, 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 the pride. And you come before God and say, God, please, help me. You know, God says, if he's going to bless you, just ask. He's not saying, go out here, do this and do that. Come here 20 times a day. Jesus says, Go, the man who prays goes into a small room and just makes short utterances to God because your father already knows before you ask. But that attitude there has to be that converting, that conveying, that passing through your words and your, your human uh, and, uh, anatomy that God has put that into. When it comes out of sight, it's spiritual. Most of us, the reason we don't get blessed is because when we 
we pray, we don't convert our physical needs by asking. Asking is the only thing that converts your physical needs to become spiritual so that God can heal them. And bringing them back the other side from the spiritual asking turns them again to become physical. It's a very powerful thing when you understand how to ask. Learn to be humble before. Impoverish yourself, appeal to God. And I can guarantee you, God Almighty will answer you. Our text, we see in, the, in the Matthew 21 22 again, and whatever you ask in prayer, believing you will receive it. Humble yourself before God by God. Who look upon you and say they are asking stop the demanding game stop the commanding things that we do stop all that and let's get back to asking God let the attitude of our heart be on our knees vulnerable before God surrendered to God and all these things shall be given to us I want every head bowed, every eye closed. Just ask. Just ask. This. You're here at the sound of my voice watching this video. I want to ask you do you know Jesus? Salvation. Saved. Right with God. For that to happen. To be born again. To be born again, you need to ask Jesus into your life. I'm asking you, are you saved? Or are you playing a religious game? Yes, you go to church. Yes, you attend meetings. Maybe you are even in the ministry. But I'm asking, are you saved? Are you right with God? If today had to be the day of the rapture, would you go? The end of the world will to come today. Would you make it to heaven? Those are the questions you need to answer. If you're saved, that the answers to all those questions you need But if it's no, you're not saved. I want to pray with you and lead you to Jesus Christ. Just where you are, heads are bowed, eyes are closed. And I want you to repeat after me with a sincere heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I come. I ask that you forgive me of my sins. Lord, I am a sinner. I have done wrong to you, to the kingdom of God, and to humanity. Lord, I ask you to come into my heart and change me. Make me new. Let all things be unpassable. Behold, all things become new. I ask for my Father this. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Just ask. Just ask God. You'll see what I'm talking about. Your life will change. Thank you.